The first lens set I bought when I switched to Canon a little over three years ago was the 100 to 500 millimeter RF lens. Since that day, I've taken over 500,000 photos and video clips with this lens. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. Stay tuned. Let's start off with the things that I like about this lens. First, we have the build quality. It is an L lens, so it's expected that the build quality and the weather ceiling should be fantastic. And I can definitely confirm that is the case. I've used this lens around the world in some very challenging climates and I've never had an issue with rain, snow, or dust, anything getting into the lens. I've been stuck in more rainstorms without my rain cover than I can count. So I need to be able to trust all of my equipment to be able to withstand all of these challenges. And this lens has definitely lived up to that. I even took it up to Maine during a polar vortex when the temperatures were minus 40 degrees and I never once had an issue with it. Next on the list is the IS or the image stabilization. I remember the first time that I picked this lens up and immediately the first thing that I noticed was how stable the image was when I was looking through the viewfinder, even at 500 millimeters. This is the first lens that I've ever had that I've been able to confidently shoot video handheld even filming at times from a moving safari vehicle and in a kayak. This lens has allowed me to shoot in scenarios I never thought possible. This comes in handy for photography as well. I've been able to take photos of owls well past sunset at shutter speeds down to 1 15th of a second handheld at 500 millimeters. That is insane. One thing I really love about this lens is the size and the weight. It's so small, especially compared to my 600 millimeter F4 that I can handhold all day with this thing no problems whatsoever and traveling with it is a dream and because it's so small i can use it on a sling that way i always have it as a secondary lens to my 600 as i mentioned and which actually leads me to the next thing that i love about it is the 100 to 500 millimeter zoom range it just gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility instead of always getting the tight portrait type shots this lens gives me the ability to zoom out when I have a really nice looking scene and I can do more of an environmental type shot with it. The next thing on the list of things that I like about this lens is the minimum focus distance. Because I can shoot this lens at just a little bit over three feet away from the subject, I've actually used it many times in place of a macro lens in Costa Rica where I was shooting uh, different types of snakes and tree frogs and things like that. So it's pretty amazing at a, with a 500 millimeter lens to be able to shoot tiny subjects that close. And the final thing on my list of things that I like about this lens is the image quality. Absolutely no complaints in this department. When I first bought this lens, you know, I did kind of think maybe it was overpriced, but again, being that it's an L lens and everything that I had mentioned that comes along with this, uh, you're going to pay more for it and I have no regrets in the world. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I'm actually considering getting a second one. So uh, image details, fantastic. Image quality, fantastic. Uh, it's super sharp and not a complaint in the world in this department. So there are two things that I don't like about this lens. One, I think is the obvious, the aperture at 500 millimeter being f7.1. It's not great. Is it a deal breaker? No, uh, but there are times, especially, you know, for me, I do go to Costa Rica and when you're in a dark rainforest like that, you need every bit of aperture that you can get. And F7.1 is a little bit difficult down there. I also photograph a lot of owls, same thing. You know, they're most active as it starts to get dark. So there are some limitations with this lens. That said, these days, you know, with things like Topaz and uh, Lightroom, now having denoise in it as well. You can get away with a lot more, so it's not exactly the end of the world. But if this lens would have even been, let's just say F5.6, uh, if they could have somehow pulled that off, that would have made me really consider traveling on some of the trips I've gone without my 600 F4, just because of how much easier it is to travel with this lens. But that said, you know, I still do travel with my 600 and this lens. Uh, however, uh, on a recent trip to Costa Rica, I did unfortunately um, destroy my 600 F4 due to a bad fall and the 100 to 500 did manage to save the trip. Had it not been for that lens, I would have really been in trouble. So I was able to get away with it even in the rainforest.
And the only other thing about this lens that I don't like is that it's an external zoom. I really, really, really wish that it was internal. Uh, being that I shoot a lot of video and I use uh, fluid heads a lot, I don't like that this lens is external zoom uh, because for the main reason with that setup is uh, all of those fluid heads are based on your, your rig being balanced. So the minute you extend the lens, it throws the whole thing out of whack and it's really annoying. And plus external zooms, uh, they, they're better with keeping dust out. I mean, not that I've really had any issues with dust or dirt getting in. I think mirrorless do a lot better than DSLRs used to in that department. I just think internal zooms, they look better, they feel better, everything about them is better. So a big knock on this, this lens is that it is an external zoom. Really wish it would have been internal. My final thoughts on this lens are the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter lens is a very versatile, high quality lens. The results that it delivers more than make up for the two minor cons that it has. And I think that this lens is definitely worth considering whether you're an amateur or professional, you won't be disappointed. <laughs>